Hello everyone. This is the first uh, Ubuntu development hangout for 2013 and um, it's good to see you all. We have a number of people already in the Ubuntu on Air ISD channel which is fantastic. seems some people report they see some issues with the uh, with the video Okay, so it seems it's it's working for for people now. Uh, there was just a little bit of, of delay, which is which is to be expected. Perfect. Um, so for those of you who just joined in, who just um, opened bootonair.com in your browser, um, below the video there's a small chat widget where you just have to enter a name and then uh, hit connect. And then you're automatically added to the uh, to the IRC channel where everybody's hanging out, and that's also where you can ask all the questions you have, and that's uh, going to make the whole thing a lot more interesting. Um, and please, uh, if you post any questions, make sure that you prefix them with question in capital letters so they stand out a little bit, and it's. And it's easier for us to to pick up all the questions you have. Uh, and today I'm joined by um, Lian Ogasawara, who uh, heads the Ubuntu kernel team. Um, we're just facing. I'm just going to invite her. Give me a second. And we're going to talk about the kernel hardware enablement and and everything that's that's going on in in in, in that team, which is going to be fairly interesting. Um, the great thing is, in in the in previous hangouts, we we often covered all kinds of of topics. They were always a bit specific. It depended who we talked to, which team we had invited, but there were always questions about uh, the kernel. Everybody wanted to know uh, about their favorite drivers and, and what's what's going to happen and hardware support and all the rest of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited that we have uh, the end here today. We're just struggling a little bit with, uh, with Google Hangout, but we're going to be there in just a second. Uh, I'm just going to talk to the people on IRC, just going to um, make sure So this has been a, a very interesting uh, start to the cycle already. I myself, I, I have been in, in holidays and just came back uh, a week ago and had lots and lots and lots of, of emails in my inbox. One thing I, I found fairly interesting, uh, I think it just landed yesterday. Um, I've been watching quite closely what, what the people with the Nexus 7 have, have been doing. So I um, just upgraded everything on the, the Nexus 7. Ubuntu is running there very, very nicely. And uh, they just managed to make the auto rotation. So as soon as you um, flip the flip the tablet around, uh, Ubuntu will also uh, change its, its orientation. It was very, very nice to see. OK. 
che bello. Give me a second while we are well I'm inviting Leanne in. Sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, but today would have been the first time where everything in uh, Google Hangout just works. The last time we had uh, difficulties with, with the sound, um, and this time we can't even get the end. Yeah, he's, there's a number of people asking what's what's going on. Um, it it seems like the end can't uh, join the hangout for some reason. It says um, starting or joining hangouts on air requires a newer version of the plugin. That one is already resolved. And then it so it says sorry, you are not in that user circles which we resolved already. This is um, slightly frustrating. But we'll get there. Just give us another minute or two.
Okay, so um, I'll just pick a few of the questions which are probably not directly uh, directed at at Leanne Ogasawa, who's going to hopefully join us very soon. She's uh, working on the kernel team, so kernel and hardware related stuff she can uh, talk about lots. But I spotted a few other questions, so I'll just skim through the log again. And it's very, very noisy. We have lots of people asking questions, so... Um, Okay. Yeah, this is a funny one. Uh, there's somebody who asked if Jono Bacon was dead. I can reassure you, Jono is doing absolutely fine. I talked to him earlier. Uh, by the way, he's he's my boss. Um, there's another question. Is it possible to get your autograph on a paper ship to Norway? Um, I'm uh, I'm a bit confused. Why would somebody ask for my <laughs> for my autograph? Um, sure, somehow we'll we'll make it happen. Just just send me an email and <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Maybe I'll send you a, a postcard or something. see what else do we have do you know about the ADA initiative um, yes I do I can't say I, I ever uh, participated in it um, but I very much enjoyed uh, reading the blog posts every year when <coughs> when, when people uh, wrote about women in in the uh, technology field uh, who inspired them and there, there, there's many, many women um, that, that inspired me in, in uh, technology in general in the open source world. Um, I just don't think I ever managed to, to write a blog post about it or uh, a longer email or something. Maybe we should do that next year. Um, I think it's, it's great because it's, in general, if you, if you tell people stories, it's not, it's not uh, only related to women. But I think if you tell people stories, how they get involved and, and um, what they did, the, the amount of work they put into open source and technology in general, I think it's, um, it's very re reassuring to people who are just getting started. Um, so I think it's, it's, a, it's a worthy cause. Um, so maybe, maybe this year I'm, I'm going to write something myself. Although I find it very hard to... Um, pick just a single person to, to write about. I'll see what I can do. Okay, there's a lot of questions about Ubuntu for the phone. So I'll make sure to, um, to see if we can invite somebody who's going to specifically talk about the phone. But I can see that there's many questions around the, the, the phone which are related to when can we buy it? Uh, are you in conversations with uh, manufacturer, manufacturer X? Are you in discussions with uh, telecom company Y and, and so on? And this is all stuff we, I, I don't know anything about for, for starters. And the second thing is, um, I will just learn about it when, when you do. Um, you know, whenever you have business negotiations and, and all the rest of it, um the details just come out when when there's 
something to talk about because uh, everything else would just hurt the relationships and it's it's just not worth doing so um, I will skip all those questions because I just don't know anything about it Um, while I'm skimming through the log, um, I'm just also talking to the end to figure out uh, what's happening with with the hangout. And I hope we're going to invite her soon. It would, would be a bit of a delay, but. Okay, let me see. Where are the next? Okay, somebody said I should turn off the light behind me. That's the most unusual request. I got up up until now, but happy to oblige. I just thought it might it look so much darker on, on the on the hangout uh, thing that is than it actually is in here. But I'm happy to do that, so turn off the light. Um, so when will Ubuntu 13 be released? That's a question I can easily answer. It's going to be uh, Ubuntu 13.04. And um, the first part before the dot is always the year. So 13 stands for 2013. And 04 means uh, April. Um, but it can be more specific if you, I can show you, here we go, just making the font a bit bigger, um, because if you go to wiki ubuntu com slash raring ring tail slash uh, release schedule, you, you can see the release schedule for, um, for this release. And you can see we're in January right now. Uh, there's going to be, oh, this is related to the LTS, so we can ignore that. In February, there's going to be a Debian import freeze. In March, we have feature freeze. And in late April, April 25th, uh, there's going to be the, the Ubuntu release. And then there's going to be a Ubuntu 13.10, which is going to get out in um, October two 2013. Okay, uh, next question. Some say the sound was too low, the uh, volume was too low. Let me see if I can fix this. Um, For some reason, it seems like I can't can't change it in the in the audio settings. Don't know what's happening here. Okay, um, have you guys responded to the invitation by XDA developers in regard of working together? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, your best bet would be to head into the um, hash Ubuntu dash arm channel because that's where all the people working on arm uh, live and they know what's what, what's going on. So um, yeah, just just ask them. I, I don't know. 
Okay. Um, has Google responded in any way to Ubuntu for phones yet? I don't know. No, no, um, no idea. Sorry about that. Um, when is Ubuntu phone being released? Um, I don't know. I would assume, and this is um, this is not not guaranteed information, but I would assume that um, it would be in in the Raring Ringtail release so soon. But um, I might be misinformed. But um, as I said, we're going to get somebody who can talk specifically about the phone uh, on on the Dev Hangout. And all those questions will be will be answered properly. Um, another question: When will you public uh, source code and image of Ubuntu for phone? The same question again. We have Lian here. I can't believe it. Greetings, <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks for> everyone. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late. I didn't foresee these technical difficulties we'd have. It's it's not the first time. The last time we had uh, Ian on the on the hangout and his yeah. sound just um, vanished after a minute of talking. He would just he would sit there and just hear <laughs> anything. That was uh, interesting as well. So no, so it, it was that Google Talk plugin that I was missing. So okay. it seemed to work. Wow, how did you do Hangouts before? I would always just, you know, join the Hangout and it would just yeah. work. So I don't know how it was working before. <laughs> okay, no idea. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's good to have you here because I was already going through the, 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 the list of questions and the kernel related stuff I had no idea how to answer. So it's good to, to have you here now. Okay, hopefully I can answer them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you will. Um, can you tell us who you are and what, what you're doing in the Ubuntu project? So currently I took on a new role, I don't know, within um, the past, I don't know, a little over six months now for uh, managing the canonical kernel team. So it's kind of a, my first step into management. So I spend um, probably about 60% of my time doing management related things, running top cover for my team, making sure we have um, you know, our roadmaps planned out for the next six months, making sure we're on task and putting out any fires that come our way. And then the other 40% of the time I, I do still try to dedicate towards um, the ta technical aspects of what I used to do as um, you know, the release manager for the kernel. So rebasing kernels, doing uploads, reviewing patches, that sort of thing. So that's um, sort of what I've been doing lately, having this split between um, a technical role and a management role. And it's been quite exciting for me just because it's something new and I think everyone enjoys doing something new and different um, than what they're, they're used to. So it's been really fun for me lately. But that's pretty much um, what I've been doing uh, most re recently for Ubuntu and the kernel. And when, when did you get involved? Like, been My gosh, it's it's been quite a, a long while. You know, I keep seeing these emails of people coming and going, and they're leaving. And I think, oh, you know, I can't believe they're they're going. They've been here for so long. But then I look back and think, well, they actually started after I did. So I've I've been around. I mean, for since uh, gosh, October of two thousand seven. So you know, five plus years now. So it's it's been quite amazing, and it's. It's interesting to look back and see that it's been five years, but it's gone by so fast. Like Ubuntu has changed so dramatically in that five years that it's amazing to see, you know, how small we were uh, um, when I first started to, you know, what we've grown to today. So it's impressive. And, and do, do you have any things you, you remember where we can very easily see how things changed or how things are very different today? Yeah, so I mean, just looking from, you know, my team's perspective, the kernel team, when I started, there was literally three people on the kernel team. There was, um, I think, Ben Collins, Tim Gardner, and Amit Kucharia. There were, there were the three guys on the team, and I was thinking, how do they manage an entire distributions kernel with just three engineers? It's insane. And I came on originally on the QA team as um, pretty much the what the defect analyst role is today on each of the team, but it, we were all consolidated within the QA team. So it was just 
amazing to see how we've gone from three individuals to now you know the team's almost 13 14 people and that's gone through ups and downs of almost to 25 people then we split into you know what is now known as the hardware enablement team and the kernel team and just seeing how we've grown and divided and been able to tackle different areas so now they you know my team used to focus on enablement as well which we still do um, from a community perspective but you know um, the HWE team has some engagements that they're in that they focus on and, and so it's just amazing to see how that's grown how the QA team has um, changed over the years from being primarily um, bug triage um, experts and um, moved into each of the individual sub teams of you know foundations desktop kernel and have their own dedicated defect analyst um, so it's just I don't know, it's just interesting to see how we've grown and, and adapted to the, um, the ways we've, um, you know, moved in different directions. And then even for my team, just the processes and procedures of how we manage our day-to-day -day business, how we've begun, um, gotten smarter about maintaining our kernel, about applying patches, about the processes of making sure our patches are upstream, um, before they even try to land in Ubuntu sometimes, just because it's easier for us maintenance-wise, and plus the entire community then benefits um, from you know, a bug fix, bug fix being applied. So it's just really amazing just to see how we've learned and um, become better at what we do every single day. And I can imagine that, that many people don't realize how much work this, this actually is. I still remember the, the very early days when somebody said, um, yeah, kernel maintenance, that's just another package. You just maintain the package and you're fine. And yeah. I think that that's what, what many people still feel. and. Uh, can you talk a bit about like what kind of work, what what happens, what what does the kernel team do? You mentioned bugs, you mentioned upstream, you mentioned merging, you men mentioned maintaining. How it's does it all work. It's a lot of work behind the scenes. I mean, people think it's so easy. You just you know take the upstream kernel, slap it together for you know in a, a distribution package and ship it. You know, but there's a lot of steps along the way that people I think don't see, and I think people often forget that. You know, we have commitments to maintaining what we've shipped in the past, you know, releases. And so we have that maintenance burden as well. So I, if I can walk people through, you know, the general life cycle, um, you know, we start with the development release. Obviously, that's our bleeding edge. We're um, pulling the latest release candidates from upstream and we're rolling them in, into our distro and releasing them. But that's just one uh, part of the you know, puzzle there. That's, you know, getting an early preview of what we're going to see, the new features we're going to see, make sure we're testing those features, make sure, um, you know, we're enabling pieces of hardware that we expect. Uh, and, but then at the same time, you know, we're coordinating with the foundations team for things like secure boot, and making sure, you know, our, our, you know, we can still boot our systems. And then also, you know, once we ship a package, then we have this whole maintenance, um, of uh, upkeep, you know, on previous releases, making sure we're applying security fixes and bug fixes and SRUs, and you know, we see things like the 1204.2 point release that's coming up. Um, this is the first uh, introduction that we're going to see a, of um, a new kernel and X stack provided in the previous point release, and I, that's uh, again with that focus on enablement and and people really wanting that security of um, the LTS release and being under that umbrella of a long term commitment from us that we're going to, you know, maintain this for the next, uh, you know, five years. And so um, that's been a big focus on, on us to make sure that these newer kernels that we're shipping in these previous point releases are stable um, and on a high level of quality that, you know, we shipped with the original stock point release. So there's a lot of that behind the scenes, and my team is actually split into um, what we consider um, a maintenance-facing um, aspect of the team and then um, a bleeding-edge development aspect. So we have engineers working on the latest rearing kernel, and then we have our, our maintenance team working on the previous releases. So um, it's a lot of, you know, hand-holding and shaking amongst uh, not only ourselves but between other teams to make sure, you know, the kernels that we ship and get out the door are rock solid and, you know, have those bug fixes and enablement patches applied. So for a 1204 and then the next LTS 1404, we're going to have um, newer kernels, newer drivers, newer X. Yeah, so we saw this with um, Lucid. We saw a lot of people requesting, you know, they want to stay on that LTS release, but they need that newer kernel because they've got some newer, you know, chipset from Intel that they're running. Um, and so people were asking for these newer kernels. So in Lucid, we we 
provided um, these backported enablement kernels as an option, but um, and we supported them, and we still do support them. Uh, and people could choose to run those if they if they needed to. But with 1204.2, it's it's going to be the first release by that we're going to ship these newer kernels by default in the image. So the 1204.2 release is going to default to the newer 1210 kernel from Quantal and XStack. Um, so I think that's that's the piece um, that's different than what we've seen before, where it was an opt-in sort of scenario. Now um, anybody who runs the 1204.2 um, installs from that media is going to have that newer um, uh, X stack and kernel. And then we're going to see that as well um, in the 1204.3 and .4 releases. We'll see newer kernels available in those. And as like you said, in the 1404 release, we're going to try to repeat that, uh, assuming this whole all goes well. You know, this is our first. Um, sort of test going into releasing newer kernels on a previous point release. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, we've tested um, everything that we need to and that it'll go off, you know, flawlessly. Awesome. Um, I can only imagine how hard it must be to, to make sure that everything works and to, to, to support it well because there's, there's millions of, of users on, on uh, LTS releases. Um, can you talk a bit about testing because quality is a is a big focus of, of Ubuntu. Um, can you talk a bit about yeah. testing there? So we have actually, um, we have a pretty rigorous SRU process just for the kernel. Um, I'm sure a lot of other teams are looking to maybe adopt a similar model, but for us, we have um, a three-week cadence where we um, have a three-week vested baking period of our kernels, and they go through each week um, as a different um, set of tests that we run against the kernel. So the you know the first week is pretty much um, bringing the kernel together, making sure we have the latest stable patches applied on top of our release, any bug fixes, security updates, and we roll that up into a package. And then we hand that off to the QA team. And the QA team has uh, a large pool of hardware that's diverse, you know, different um, models of uh, chipsets and wireless cards and graphics cards. And, and so they run a, a battery of tests um, against each of those kernels just to make sure we haven't introduced any regressions. And we also verify that every single patch that we apply uh, in a stable update, that it's been verified, that it's been confirmed to fix the bug that it's claiming to confirm. And then we also make sure that those fixes aren't regressing, um, you know, other pieces of hardware. So we that goes through, you know, a week of testing in the QA team. And then it's handed off to uh, the certification team, and they run their own set of certification tests against those same kernels, looking for the same exact issues, making sure that we're verifying the bugs that are getting fixed is also, and also making sure we're not introducing any regression. So we have, you know, this long baking period of uh, our QA team dedicated to testing, our certification team dedicated to testing, as well as interacting with the community, making sure that, you know, the bugs that we're fixing um, for, you know, people who've reported them, that they're getting fixed. So it's, it's this big process, and if anywhere along the way we detect an issue, we immediately immediately, you know, put a stop on that kernel. We uh, try to bisect where the issue is and either we'll either just drop kick that patch out of the set if it's too problematic and we can't fix it, you know, easily because we follow this strict three-week cadence and, it, and if there's something causing issues, it's, you know, punt it out and it'll land in the next cadence. But uh, our goal is to make sure, you know, we're only providing fixes and we're not introducing regressions and it's a pretty rigorous process that we follow. And that three-week cadence is actually so people have, in the past, it was unpredictable. When, you know, you know you file this bug and you know there's a patch lingering there and there's a test kernel, but when is it officially going to be available to me, um, you know, through the normal update process? And so that's why we introduced this three-week cadence so people could have this predictability of when their fix is going to land. And that's um, a lot more for some of our our enga engagements with some customers, you know, they want to know when is their fix going to land. So, um, it, you know, it's it's beneficial to us and, and to everybody to know exactly when our kernels are going to be released and what bugs are getting fixed in that release and that it's been thoroughly tested type of thing. And we're talking about, I don't know, hundreds of fixes per release? It, it can be, you know, every state upstream, so um, what people may or may not know is that um, at least for you know LTS releases and even our um, non-LTS releases, we rebase to the latest, it's called upstream stable. Upstream stable basically um, has a set of requirements that they only apply specific patches. They must have fixed a bug. They must be pretty concise, you know, no major um, changes to subsystems, that sort of thing. Must, you know, must fix a bug type of thing. And so we re-actually pull in all of those patches because we feel that, you know, 
Upstream does a great job of maintaining these upstream stable kernels and, and everyone benefits from them and our users obviously get bug fixes uh, through those channels and so we should provide that as well. So we pull those patches and there could be anywhere from, you know, 10 patches if it's a quick turnaround, you know, they notice, oh, we, we forgot to include this in the last batch, here's, you know, a, a few more to, you know, over 100 plus patches in a stable, um, one of those upstream stable updates. And so we queue those in, we test them, and then also on top of that, you know, we'll, you know, receive um, bug fixes through Launchpad that, you know, we've resolved. So um, it could be something as easy as backporting a patch from a newer kernel back to uh, Precise or, you know, a, an issue that we've detected on our own and, and then um, applied. And a lot of times, you know, we'll even find regressions in the upstream stable releases that, that may have been missed and we try to communicate those back up to make sure, you know, everyone's you know, not experiencing the same regression and it's getting resolved. So, yeah, it can be hundreds of patches that go into every single update that, you know, goes out every three weeks. So it's quite a lot to keep track of. I think that's a very nice summary of what the kernel team does because it's hard work. It really is. <laughs> I feel like we're we're a well-oiled machine though at this point, you know, we, we know exactly what our process is. It, it you know, not everybody needs to know it, but at least you know we have, a, you know, a, a good understanding of what we need to do and when it needs to be done and how to do it in the in the most efficient manner. So fantastic. And for for rearing, what is what is your gut feeling? How's the kernel looking? So it's looking great. It, Raring was actually one of these releases where it was really easy for us to choose the kernel because a lot of it has to do with the, the upstream timing of when upstream is releasing. And they actually have fallen into a really relatively nice cadence as well. So we can kind of predict. And there's actually this, this cool web page that predicts when the next, you know, versions of the kernel are going to be released down to the day, you know, and so we try to use that and leverage and see, okay, when's our, you know, planned release date, when's the upstream planned release date, and so 3.8, it, it, it fell out really nicely, it's probably going to come out um, March, end of March, early April time frame, I'm guessing, and um, so we'll, we'll just, you know, stick with that, we'll have a couple of weeks of, of baking before we uh, officially release it in rearing, so um, it, it should be, it was one of those kind of no-brainer decisions, you know, as opposed to Quantal, where it was like, do we go with a 3.5 kernel, a 3.6 kernel? And then we're also, you know, having to entertain the ideas of what we're going to miss if we don't, you know, land a newer kernel versus, um, you know, risk of stability if we, you know, uh, go with too, you know, too far of a bleeding edge kernel and an early release candidate versus, you know, something that's an official release version, you know, what are the trade-offs there for us in terms of maintenance and, you know, having to maintain that for the next, you know, 18 months um, for the non-LTS releases. So, rearing is easy, you know, 3A kernel, and I don't think that's going to change um, at all. That's very good because uh, we just answered one of the first questions the audience had, which kernel it's going to be. Okay, cool. <laughs> and is there anything in the in the in the kernel since uh, the last release which, which people are going to be very happy about? Any major updates? Yeah. yeah. So I think the biggest thing that we're going to see um, different from the three five kernel we released in Quantum. It actually was introduced in I think the three seven kernel, but you know mm -hmm. three eight is going to be the first official one that we'll see in Ubuntu. Is that this unified? Um, uh, single kernel image binary for ARM platforms. And so, you know, before you'd have to have a, a separate kernel for every single ARM platform, we're starting to see this multi-platform support for ARM being introduced with, you know, the device tree work that's coming into play. So I think uh, one of my guys is actually investigating that right now with our 3A kernel, you know, what um, ARM platforms can we um, support from a single kernel image. Uh, so I think that's going to be one of the biggest things we'll hopefully see um, with this uh, rearing kernel. Um, there's also, you know, talks of um, signed kernel modules for, you know, um, this uh, secure boot model and um, we probably won't enable that um, at the moment, but it, the support is there and it's landing upstream. So that's kind of a, a new feature that uh, people will be seeing. Um, trying to think what else. Um, was that caught my eye. I think that um, unified ARM kernel image is kind of the big thing that, that came through. Yeah, that's uh, also one of the things that most people in the channel started asking right from the beginning. Uh, what's going on with the phone? What's happening with the Nexus 7? What's what's happening? Right. Where, where is your team? Where are you in, involved in, in all these things? So um, for the 
the phone, um, my team hasn't been involved so much just because um, that's been handled by our hardware enablement team. Um, but obviously, if, if they needed any um, support or input, my team was there to, to help fill them in. Um, there is also things for like the Nexus 7 kernel. We've been working closely with them again on that as well, helping try to um, uh, bring together their kernel config into um, to reflect a little bit more of what our distro config looks like in terms of a kernel. So we have these um, configuration scripts that we run on our distro kernel just to make sure not only between um, the kernels that we ship, but each flavor of the kernel that we ship, we have different um, flavors of kernel people kernels that people aren't aware of. But we want some consistency amongst our configurations between those kernels. And so we're trying to share that um, between um, people doing Nexus 7 um, kernel bring up and making sure that their kernel configs kind of mirror what the distribution configs are. And so uh, we have some scripts that are trying to be smart and cheeky about um, automating that process for us so we don't have to go in line by line and, and do a comparison. So Andy Whitcroft has, has been, you know, pulling his hair out, you know, getting this pulled together and, and working with um, the HWE team to make sure that that's all pulled in. So we've been sort of chipping in here and there, but we, we don't own those kernels per se um, just yet. Okay, but but you but, but are you foreseeing that there's going to be much more merging in the, in the future that we're going to have less uh, kernel images? I would you know I would hope so. I would say you know obviously from a maintenance perspective, um, less kernels to maintain the better. And if you can have your resources consolidated, focusing on a single um, um, source rather than multiple, I mean that's just uh, better to be more efficient there. But it's hard to say you know if, if we're gonna the distribution. Um, Ubuntu engineering side of thing is going to be pulled away from that or if that's going to be left to task to the the hardware enablement teams Okay, yeah, I guess that makes, makes perfect sense So you mentioned a few things um, which are going to happen for the for the next LTS um, we're, we're between two LTSs right now um, is, is there anything else you can already see at the horizon somewhere what's going to happen until 14 or 4? So I know that you know this. This was kind of a big topic um, at the beginning of this release, before the whole phone, you know, um, announcement came out, and that kind of you know has kind of taken um, center stage. But before that, we were uh, we were talking about um, this road to fourteen oh four from an Ubuntu engineering perspective, and and also from a kernel team's perspective, and and where we want to be in fourteen oh four, and what's what's that going to look like? And um, we were throwing together um, or talking about this idea of a, a rolling release. Um, I know people have these knee-jerk reactions about this rolling release, but the plan was by 1404, we wanted to sort of target um, what we're calling a rolling release and, and go from an LTS to LTS only model um, and you eliminate these interim releases. So that was being discussed earlier. We, we didn't really set anything in stone, but I would say that that's still sort of um, in the cards as a possibility of happening uh, when we hit the next 1404 release. So it could go from like 1404 to 1604 and, and then everything in between is what they'd consider a rolling release. You know, you're kind of going to be pushed and, and following the latest um, package releases, not only from the kernel, but, you know, from the entire distribution. And that is a, a huge uh, task to take on from a distribution standpoint, making sure that everything um, works well together from on a daily basis, but I think we're getting there already in terms of having daily quality from um, our QA team. They're running, you know, daily boot tests and um, smoke testing, and so I think if we can really get that um, solidified, uh, moving to this idea of a rolling release for 1404 and beyond is, uh, will, could become a reality, but um, it, it obviously has impacts on, on um, you know, users of Ubuntu, and, and are they going to be satisfied with only having a, a major release every two years and having a rolling release in between? So, I mean, there's there's obviously ant, uh, questions that we still need to answer and and, and be happy with um, the decisions that we're going to make. But this is still something we're still discussing. Uh, you know, nothing's set in stone, but it, it's just ideas and and how we can um, become more efficient and provide better quality. And and people are saying that they're only moving to you know LTS releases and and um, not very many people are actually following the, the inner and bleeding edges because they like that stability of the LTS releases. So that's kind of where this is coming from. And yeah, I think it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, we I think we have some experience already with with projects such as uh, Firefox or, or um, Ubuntu One or, or other bits and pieces where we made sure that um, new functionality and and um, New releases made it back into old releases, 
And uh, I could imagine that also from a maintenance point of view, it might be easier if you just focus on one set of code. So yeah. Well, at least from my my team's perspective, we could still we would still provide these you know sort of enablement kernels back in the previous LTS releases, but we'd have more control of what we offered rather than it being dictated by a specific point in time and we're forced to deliver, for example, a three eight kernel back in twelve oh four. We could say, oh well, you know maybe we should wait till three nine because we're going to see a few more features uh, enabled there that that people want to see, and then we'll be able to to ship a three nine kernel back in twelve oh four. Whereas To, you know, in today's world, we're you know driven by our, our time-based releases, and and the kernel version that we ship, um, it's you know locked in for you know 13.04 and 13.10 type of thing. Whereas if we move to a rolling release and and the kernels that we provided in our um, previous point releases, we'd have a little bit more wiggle room in terms of what we want to distribute and ship. That makes makes a lot of sense. Sorry, I was just a bit distracted because I was going through the list of, of questions just to make sure. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Uh, somebody asked about um, the 3.8 kernel and gaming performance. Do you know if there's anything in there? Not that uh, specifically. No, there's nothing that I'm aware of, but I know that we have, you know, like a low latent, low latency kernel flavor that, um, like the Ubuntu Studio guys are maintaining, and that's something that's maintained outside of, of the core uh, distro, um, and so they maintain that as a separate flavor. And I know that they've been rebasing and uploading. So if people are interested in, in gaming um, in real time sort of aspects, they should try that kernel and, and see how it goes. Perfect. There's another question about NVIDIA Optimus support in uh, 13.04. Do you know anything about that? Um, I, I would say that it should be supported, but I, I don't know off the top of my head. But obviously, if it's not, file a bug. Let my team know, and we'll look into it. Ah, that's a good one. Somebody else asked um, if they could help with, with kernel testing. Um, where should they start if they want to help out? I love this question. I, I think, you know, I love it when everyone asks this question, you know, how do they get involved? So uh, obviously I'm a, a good point of contact if people just want to, you know, shoot me an email, leanne at ubuntu.com, that's um, fine by me, but um, probably a, a better scenario rather than me being the bottleneck and, and the filter here is that um, get in touch with us on our IRC channel. We're on uh, free node and hash ubuntu-kernel. Um, the entire kernel team hangs out on there and because we're globally distributed and we're in different time zones, there should be someone at every single hour, no matter where you are, um, available to help point you in the right direction. Um, and it can be anything from, you know, I have a bug, what should I do? We'll help you out, you know, help you out how to file a bug, how to debug. If you want to look, get into kernel development, we can point you at wiki pages. Um, yeah, we're more than happy, or more than happy to help, you know, funnel you in the right direction wherever you want to scratch your itch. And so we also have um, a kernel team mailing list. I think it's kernel team at uh, um, list.ubuntu.com. And so feel free to shoot an email there if you're also looking to get involved. But yeah, we I love when people, you know, come out of the woodworks and start helping us because we've gotten some great contributions from commu community members. You know, I can't tell the community members for, you know, with the kernel, you know, how grateful I am and how much I appreciate what they do. And I try to send people, you know, personal emails when I, when I notice them, you know, doing a good job. But I think I'm probably missing, you know, hundreds of people who are helping out. Um, You know, I just want to give my thank you, you know, shout out to everybody who's gotten involved already. But we obviously welcome anybody else who wants to come join in. Awesome. Um, there's a question about EFI booting. Do you know what? what It about should there? be supported. You know, you should be able to EFI boot your systems um, right now. So, um, yeah. Um, Yeah, I think that there's there's still a bit of confusion about how how all the the booting works and, and what what changed there in in the in the last two two releases. Um, so far, uh, what what is what is uh, the the feedback you've you've been getting? Is everything just so working? Everything is fine. Secure boot should be enabled. Um, it should be working. Um, I'm not aware of it not working. We did a mad dash at the end of um, 12.10 to get that all uploaded and, and, and working. So that should be in there. Um, the patches haven't changed. 
um, too much for us from a kernel perspective. I believe that is being backported to 1204.2 to um, su um, support secure boot um, in the point two release. Um, so I don't know what sort of testing it's received there um, at the moment, though. Okay. Um, here's another question. Do you communicate with the Linux organization sometimes or not at all? The Linux organization, is that... Can they be more specific, I guess? Well, I, I guess, well, I'm assuming they're meaning upstream. I guess so. Um, but, um, so yeah, so we, we do communicate um, frequently with the, um, the upstream um, kernel community in terms of making sure we're sending patches back upstream. We have um, developers on our team actively engaging with upstream developers to make sure um, patches are getting um, written and submitted and uh, reviewed and cleaned up. So we do have a lot of interaction with upstream. I know that that's something that um, Canonical specifically gets beat up about it that you know we don't contribute enough you know for being as popular as we are we don't um, have the resources um, focused upstream um, like some people should be and I, I you know I can only say we can only contribute so much you know our team is what 13 14 people right now so um, obviously you know I described all the maintenance burdens that we have previously and the development releases so a lot of our engineering resources go into just maintenance and rolling the new release, but obviously um, any extra cycles that we have, um, anything that's going to benefit the Ubuntu distribution and community, we obviously want to focus resources there as well, and if that is working with Upstream, then that's what we do. Um, but, you know, I, I want to kind of quell all these sort of rumors that, you know, we sort of hoard patches and we don't, you know, we don't send patches back upstream. That is, you know, contrary to, to what we actually do. We have a, a strict policy that we, we send uh, all of our patches upstream where applicable. And if, if they don't get accepted upstream, we make a decision. Do we want to take on the maintenance burden of keeping them um, applied on our distro kernel um, for the benefit of, of our users? But um, for, for, you know, every patches, every six months, we, we, we review them, we send them upstream, if, if they should go upstream, if they've been noted that they've been set upstream and, and knacked and, and, and not acceptable for, for one reason or another, we make a, a judgment decision if we're going to keep them in our kernel as well. And a lot of times we find that, you know what, we don't, you know, if upstream isn't, if it isn't good enough for upstream, it usually isn't good enough for us. So there, there has to be a very compelling reason for why we're going to hang on to a non-upstream patch. And, and a lot of the times it's, it's a case of it's still making its way upstream, it's going through multiple cycles of review and it's in a maintainer's tree but it isn't officially in the upstream um, Linus's kernel so we'll hang on to it for the time being um, until it does officially land upstream but um, so yeah we try to engage and work with upstream as much as possible um, so I, I hope that's what that person was asking yeah I guess so um, you're probably not the best talk person to talk about x11 and the new Wayland no yeah that would be more kind of the graphics you know X team yeah, okay, I'll, I'll keep that question for, for the next time we have somebody else. Um, here's somebody with the problem of the SD card reader. I would suggest you just file a bug. <clears throat> yeah, if there are you know, any sort of bugs or issues, file a bug. You can actually, I would you know, kind of put a plug in here that you can use Ubuntu bug, Ubuntu hyphen bug Linux, and that will um, run that from your um, terminal command line, and that will automatically file a bug against the um, the kernel package um, in Launchpad, and it'll automatically grab all the logs that we typically ask for when you file a kernel bug report. You know your D message output, your LSPCI, which kernel version you're running, the the distro release that you're you're running, and so that'll it'll automatically grab all the information rather than you as a bug reporter having to worry about oh do I have every everything that they need to debug my issue. So it'll grab all that, attach it. Um, to the bug report and, and then obviously just come in one of the IRC channels and, and ping us or, or send me an email and, and I can route you to the right person who kind of is our expert in that area. So yeah, so if there's an issues with SD cards, let me know. Cool. Um, here's another question about 3D acceleration um, since kernel 3.5. Are you aware of any changes there? Uh, I'm not up to speed on, on any specifics there, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we, we went through a couple of things already. Is, is there anything else you wanted to, to talk about? Anything that's going on in the kernel team, the kernel community? Well, if I can put a plug in, we have a position 
open um, on the canonical kernel team that we're looking for. Um, it's going to um, obviously a, a kernel engineer, so you need to have you know the usual um, kernel foo skills there. But we're actually the, this position is going to be focused more in the server space, you know, and and directly working more closely with the server team and, and virtualization. So if there are any sort of uh, vert server kernel experts out there and they're looking for you, either a new job or a change in what they're doing and and you think you'd be a qualified candidate, um, go to, I think, the canonical.com website under the careers section and um, submit your resume. Because um, I think that position is such a niche sort of um, position that we're looking for. We're actually finding um, a, a smaller pool of applicants, but you know, we'd like to get the word out that we're, we're looking to hire. Fantastic. I just looked it up. It's uh, canonical.com slash careers. That's where you can find out more about it. Um, in, in general, how, how can, can uh, we mentioned the, um, the uh, Ubuntu kernel IRC channel, is another good way to stay on top of things what, what are happening in, in, in the kernel space, kernel and hardware space in Ubuntu? So in Ubuntu, it'd be the IRC channel, but even more so our probably our mailing list, that's where you're going to see a lot of um, requests for comments and discussions going on as well as patches that are going to be coming in. So I think if anybody subscribes to that mailing list, it's not a high volume. Uh, I mean, it's probably a, a moderate volume of, of patches and, and discussions happening there. So um, if people want to just subscribe to that mailing list, I think they'll, they'll see a lot of what's going on within our team. Perfect. Um, and I think that's very much it. I just went through the majority of the log, which is very long, <laughs> and um, yeah, we, we need to find somebody to talk more about the phone. Obviously, for some reason, there's uh, there's somebody who wants an autograph. And <laughs> well, so I think someone pinged me about that earlier, and I'm a little hesitant to just send my signature out. I guess to someone I don't really know, but. I, I understand people wanting an autograph, but... Maybe at the next UBS we're just going to send a postcard. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just asked everyone for uh, for more questions. Oh, here's another one. Here's probably the last one. Uh, what kernel is the phone built on? What kernel? Oh, it's actually, um, the kernel is an Android kernel. I forget the specific version that it, it's built on at the moment, though. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, when we find somebody to talk about the phone, we can talk a bit more about this. Perfect. Um, yeah, despite the... Uh, I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. It's, it's uh. always like this. Whenever okay. You know, somebody new. There's some issues we have to go through, but we managed to go through all of the questions. Uh, okay, good. It was, it was fantastic. So thanks again. Give a big hug to everyone on the kernel team for the fantastic work. I will. And uh, I'm sure we're going to invite you soon again. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And uh, to everyone else, um, if you want to stay on top of what's happening in the Ubuntu development world, um, I would suggest you just follow the Ubuntu dev uh, social media accounts that's uh, on, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+, on uh, Identica. It's always the uh, Ubuntu dev handle there. And then you're going to know when the next Hangout is, what kind of uh, initiatives we have, and um, how you can get involved. Um, one thing I want to mention is uh, the um, Ubuntu Developer Week. If you go to wikiubuntu.com slash Ubuntu Developer Week, you can see the schedule. And let me just share it on my screen. Here we go. As you can see, it's from January 29th to January uh, 31st. And we have lots of se sessions uh, lined up. Uh, we're going to give you an introduction to Ubuntu development, how to get your development environment set up. Uh, we talk about packaging, patch systems, working with upstreams. We're going to introduce many, um, many Ubuntu development teams to you. 
Um, and, and there's going to be lots of hands-on activity where you find out more about how to get things done. We talk about apps, about the um, about automated testing, and uh, so there's going to be lots of opportunities where you can ask all the questions you have, where you can um, meet people, where you can get involved and uh, get your first uh, fixes for Ubuntu in. So, and we're also because just somebody asks on. Um, on IRC, we're also going to keep the logs of those sessions. Some of them are going to be uh, Hangouts, others are going to be just on IRC, where it's easier to copy and paste and um, just follow along. So uh, I hope you're all going to be there. As I said, uh, 29th, that's, that's exactly in one week. Um, there's going to be developer week. I hope you're all going to be there. So uh, with that, uh, I wish you a great rest of your day and uh, see you soon again. Take care.